Next, nine more women say a fired Miami Township police sergeant groped them, made sexually charged comments, and sent sexually charged messages from his police phone. The allegations go back years. The Claremont County prosecutor wants to use the evidence in John Swing's upcoming trial. He was fired after a young woman in the Explorers program said he groped and assaulted her on a ride along. In a story you'll see only here on Local 12 News, Deborah Dixon shows us what other women say. The charge against John Swing is gross sexual imposition. A 20-year-old woman says the father of three groped her on a police ride-along, spanked her, and made sexual comments. His attorney called her a police groupie and not credible. Now come new court documents backing up her story. Nine women say Swing did some of the same things to them. They are identified by initials. M.S. says as an intern at the Miami Township Police Department, Sergeant Swing repeatedly put his hand on her thigh, contacted her with sexual text messages, and talked about wanting to spank her. A Miami Township police officer identified as S.M. said Swing continuously commented on his desire to spank her. In a room at the police station, S.M. says he began rubbing her thigh. She asked him to stop when he didn't. She tased him. Other women in the document include a bank teller who says Swing caressed her hand whenever she gave him money and one time called her over to his car parked in the lot, exposed himself, and asked her to touch him. An employee at Kmart in Erlanger says Swing was a security guard when he would repeatedly rub up against her, grab her buttocks, and make sexual comments. There are other women some of the stories too graphic to tell. It's what's legally called Evidence Rule 404B. Scott Croswell is not involved in this case. 404B, which indicates that prior acts of a defendant can be used if the acts are essentially similar to what he's accused of now, in general showing that he has essentially done the identical thing in the past. A judge will decide if past behavior can be part of his current trial. Most judges are very uh, strict when they apply these rules because clearly in a criminal trial, if you're presenting acts of prior criminal conduct, it can be highly prejudicial. Scott Riley, who's with Claremont County, he's not going to talk about it until they argue it mm -hmm. this month. But Swing's attorney said it, none of this should be allowed in because it's kind of a character assassination. But I've heard this argued in court before that this is a behavioral fingerprint. It's what you leave behind when you repeat the behavior. So we'll be at that hearing in March. So how's this going to change the case of all of these bits of testimony are allowed, do you think? Well, all, if all of it goes in, right now is sort of a he says, she says. If it goes in, it's more like he says, they say. Yeah. And then it's up to the jury to calculate the weight of that. Deb, thanks very okay. much. Well, a judge will hear uh, the arguments on allowing the evidence that we've been talking about at trial next month.